Well, we're up here shooting another video. Uh, this one's gonna be a little different than the ones we've done in the past. You know, usually we're doing like uh, adventures. We're going to different places and stuff and checking out all the country. And we got a couple camping videos in there that are pretty cool. But we're side-by-side -side survival and adventure. And uh, this is gonna be the first actual survival survival video that we've, we're gonna do. So the scenario is gonna be uh, so you're going in the backcountry somewhere and your uh, rig either breaks down, you get lost, run out of gas, but what do you carry in your rig on a daily basis that you can make it through a one night or two nights of a, of a survival mission? So that's kind of what we've done. We didn't put anything extra in here. It's just kind of all the stuff that I carry. You know, a bunch of survival gadgets. I've never had to use them because when we go camping, we load it down with just pure camping gear. So I've never done any of this before. I've never used any of the equipment that I have, which, you know, we're going to find out what it really is. And uh, we're going to see if we can do a night up here. I know there's uh, calls for rain. Uh, last uh, week we are in this area. We found a bunch of tarantula nests. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I know there's bears up here, mountain lions. So there's all kinds of creepy stuff. Uh, the good thing is you guys can just sit at home, get some popcorn, and watch this video and uh, get to see what happens. So let's uh, come along for the ride. You ready? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, let's get this trip going. Headed up to the back country. Three years ago, we went back this route. We were about a mile 120 coming back over some steep terrain, and my Polaris blew a hole in a differential about the size of a golf ball. Had that happened prior to us getting over the last steep grade, uh, we probably wouldn't have made it. It was late at night. Uh, Bill towed me back to the trailer, which took three hours to go about 10 miles. So. You never know, things can happen. Gonna look over here on our left, three big bucks. That's pretty cool. Typically you don't see antelope down this low, but there's so much water this year and so much food for them that they've been down here in the lower elevations. tarantula nest and you got to check this out I don't think anybody's home Okay, so the situation is we've been having these huge thunderstorms up here. Massive storm cloud came through, washed out the road. So we're going to be stuck up here for a while. We've got some friends that have a ranch down below. They said they could come up here and help us out, but it won't be until tomorrow. So this is the situation. We're going to be spending the night here. We're on top of this hill. I found this nice little... Uh, level spot where we can hang out at Not and uh for now what we're gonna do first is uh because the thunder clouds are coming back we could see them so i've got my uh doggies bed which he brings in every video and i know we have i always carry this oh yeah it was stuck in there so got the tarp, which we always bring. This this is a plate uh, that you buy for your Honda. And the dog, he likes to ride in here. It's a big pit bull. It's kind of cool. There's little cubby holes in here. So I stash whatever I can. There's the water. Uh, a plastic bag. I don't know what that's for. I've got a, like a toe strap or something in here. And then... One of those little tables, but we, uh, survival table things. And then he's got his pad on this side. 
So I think what we need to do first before we go in further is we got to try to get this uh, tarp set up. And I know since I bought Phil a hammock a while back, and then I have one too. I've never used it. I've opened it up once, just see what it looked like. So we're we're thinking of maybe trying to get, you know, span it across these two rigs here. Maybe we get a tarp up over the top. Uh, there's no sleeping on the ground because it's just solid rock. And then if you just saw the two big tarantula nests that we saw, I'm not sleeping on this ground. So I've never slept in a hammock before. So we're gonna see what happens. Let's get this set up and then we'll we'll come back to some other stuff. Yeah, I've got the roof rack from AFX Motorsports. Um, we keep our chairs up there all the time because we always go out and have lunch. And this thing's cool. You'll camping, you can put a lot of gear on this thing. It's super heavy duty, solid, uh, well made. Price was reasonable, and I re highly recommend this rack. Okay, phase one. We've got the two hammocks stretched across the rigs, which actually is kind of cool. Uh, we both got in them. Uh, they seem like they're doable. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're obviously not sleeping in the rocks. So, you know, if you had to, this wouldn't be too bad. So now we, uh, we're we gonna see what we can do with this uh, tarp. To make sure we don't get rained on. Well, we're gonna string it across the two rigs, so. We'll uh, set that up. Phil's got it on his GoPro. has got a little time lapse going on, so we'll cut that in. There. Okay, so if that wasn't that hard, it, we probably spent 30 minutes. We've got the hammocks set up across the rigs, and then uh, the tarp. So we're, the wind's gonna come this way, we think. Could be raining here pretty soon. The hammocks are under here. Uh, it looks like we should be okay. I don't know about Phil's side over there, <laughs> but we might move that over. But anyways, uh, I'm pretty happy with this because we got a little shade on this side. Uh, again, you know, those hammocks are like six inches by four inches, so Anybody could throw one of those in their rig or throw two of them there. Uh, the tarps, you know, especially when you buy them new, they're all flat. And I think this could be about a 12 by 12 footer, which is nice to have a big one. That way you can uh, string it across the rigs. We've done it a couple times before it was raining, so it worked out good. So I think we're good to go in the sleeping and it is now raining. <laughs> I have just started rain. So we'll see what happens here in a minute. Okay, well we got the shelter set up and now we're gonna go over and see what Carl's got in the box. What you got, Carl? We got some off spray. Nice. Put that down here. We got a collapsible cooler, but in the collapsible cooler, which is ice and stuff, this is your little camp stove for the night. Look how small this thing is. This will just attach onto here. And then, you know, you just need something to uh, contain it to boil water, which we have, and we'll show you that later. So this is a must have. Takes up no space. Let's see what else is in here. So that part's good. Uh, oh, we got some fire start cubes. Oh, I can't read this, what is that? Four Sigmatica instant coffee mix. <laughs> no, we got coffee. Where did that came from? takes up no space at all we pretty much got a lot of stuff here so let's put this one on hold and we'll go to the next one so here we go for round two and uh, I was just commenting to Carl what the hell is that thing up above so this has been in my Polaris and here for like three or four years it's like the um, secret stash box or something yeah so we're gonna have to have a knife to get this open oh geez but in here is three uh, dehydrated meals. Really? Uh, I'm not sure what kind, but... Uh, <laughs> or the expiration oh, date. <laughs> there is no, there's their 25 years. 
No, we're good. So hopefully they're still good, which I think they are. And they're, I've had them before. They're, they're actually pretty tasty. And if you're out somewhere and you're hungry, they, you know, the first time I tried them, I thought they were going to be horrible, but they were actually really good. So we will boil some water with the little camp stove. And I've got a little container to boil water. I'll show where that's at later. And then we'll use one of those meals. So whatever kind of storage you got on this rig. Lots of storage. So through my jacket, I wasn't going to bring it, but since it's calls for thunderstorms today and you're out riding, you probably would put a jacket in there. So that's in there. This is my wife's Tempur-Pedic backrest. This is a cooler for the doggies. Poor man's AC. So nice. I got all the stuff for the GoPro, the batteries. There's a drone in here. No survival stuff there. Uh, in here, glove box. Yep. It's a portable power source. This is cool. This will fit in your pocket. You can hike around with this and bring it all over the place. It'll charge your phone up for days. Um, you got some fuses. Tools. Lighter. All that. This is a... This is a make-your-own first aid kit. Okay, let's bring it over here. You got hydrogen peroxide. And a spray Because think about it, first aid kits don't have anything. You got Advil, so you get a headache or something. This is a quick clot bandage for some catastrophic wounds, like a gunshot wound or something. Eye wash, trust me, you're out here. My wife's got stuff in her eyes before and it's brutal. Um, you need a spore if you get cuts. Then you've got your basic bandage pack, some gauze in here and some tape. Another big, whoop. More gauze. More gauze. Man down. That's not gonna be uh, clean. So, but anyways, I put this stuff together because... Experience. First aid kits don't have all this stuff in it. And experience teaches you. And we've been places where we ran across these two kids on bicycles that one kid fell, we were like six, seven miles out, this kid fell in the rocks. He was covered in blood. And we weren't, we didn't have this, we had a, something similar to this in my backpacking kit, we were backpacking. And we were able to pack this kid up, get him back on his bike and, and get him out of there. So, you know, think about what you have there. Extra rear glasses, gonna need those. This is a portable, a larger portable power kit. This one is actually uh, solar powered. So once you charge it up, oh, a lot of times you don't gotta use the solar portion, but say you're stuck out for a long time, this will charge itself up. It's kind of cool to have. Okay, I think this is round three. The pad is for the doggy. Um, you know what, that could come in very handy if the These are sort of two little camp chairs that I carry just in case people don't have any there with us. So you can have those. That they make a really good footrest. Now, the other thing, really what I wanted to point out is, you know, you think you're going out for the day, you bring a couple bottles of water each because uh, you don't have a place to store it. So this, there's places all over your machine you could hide water. This one, it's got a cool spot behind the seat. If I take the seat off, there's water all the way in here. So I can put about 10 waters just in the seat. <laughs> nice. So you don't ever have to worry about it. You don't when have you to use thirsty. them. Yeah, so that's one of my suggestions. Just make sure out, make sure that uh, you pack, just stash waters like all over your machine. Trust me, when you start looking for little spots here and there, you can probably put 15, 20 bottles of water all over the place. You might only need two or three every time you go out, but the one time you are stuck out uh, for a couple days, especially if you're in a you know desert situation, uh, that water won't last you but more than just a few days. So it's a good idea to stock up on the water. Okay. One last thing to look at, and then we're done with the survival stuff. No, actually, then we got to go to Phil's rig. Four. This is the last spot to store stuff. Um, I don't know what you guys' rigs are. What you have. 
put the towel in. You can purchase this kit to store stuff in here. Front trunk. Uh, okay, this is like actually mountain climbing rope. Uh, it's super heavy duty. You want to go down a cave or a mine shaft? There you go. Just got a, a strap here. There's some slime in here, which I had a tire that was leaking. We could not find out where it was coming from, and I put half a bottle of that in it and, and uh, aired it back up, and it was good as new. High straps. Oh, this is what I was looking for. So this. Let's see what it, if it is what I think it is. Okay. This is actually a little burner stove you can use. So here's um, these cubes. They actually go in here. You light it. This goes on top. Put this on. This is just enough water for one of those kits. We've got the little propane stove, which is going to be a little bit faster. But I will put this on there. We'll boil the water. And that's how we're going to have dinner. This is a puncture kit. It's got everything to fix your tire. This is a, I don't know what that is. But this is a military surplus kit. You can buy them, you know, online, they're cheap. It's like a mess kit. Never used it, but uh, let's see if we can get it open. For the love of God. Okay. It's got a cup, <laughs> okay come in handy this is a, a canteen canteen which is kind of cool and this is a you know you can boil water in it this is actually kind of nicer than that one so it all comes with a little complete kit it's pretty compact uh, not sure how it goes but anyways just another example of stashing some gear in your rig Anything else in that deep cavernous hole? There's nope. some JB Weld in there. JB Weld! Just in case. So, just, just in case you blow a transfer you know, case. The, the whole you know, mantra to this story is you can put whatever you want in your rig, but, but you you got a lot of spaces to hide stuff. So, you know, put it all in there. You never, ever know. Again, make sure you got enough water is the most critical thing uh, in your rig all the time. So, so hide water bottles, keep them everywhere. You know, put in places where you don't normally going to use them every time you go out there. So, and then just take additional water that you need, you know, as, as you're out there cruising for the day. So, um, pretty happy with what we got going on. We haven't got to Phil's rig yet, so I don't even know what he has in there. Okay, you had some pretty cool stuff in that uh, storage box. What else? So, I always carry this bag. Rain, summer, fall, winter, sunshine doesn't matter. But this is a duffel that. Uh, my dad used to carry on his Simmelville, so it's got uh, waterproof. Dad's and always had the best stuff, so. I got my <laughs> extra rugged radio headsets in here because I haven't put the rugged bag in there. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, there's a jacket. Structure. Oh, you got a jacket. That hey. could come in very handy tonight. Yeah, you might need that tonight. That's cool. Line on line. Maps. Um, Maps that just in is... case. I'll tell you one thing, you can have your the apps on your phone and this and that, but he's pulled these things out when we've been out places and we've we've been able to uh, navigate better with those those maps than with the apps that we had. So, you know, with the limited service, sometimes we're out in the middle of nowhere. Game changer. Sometimes you don't have a cell signal. Go. GPS like it. doesn't work when you don't have a cell signal. Yeah. Look at there. Blanket. What? Is it from like US Marines? What does it say? Navy. US <laughs> family was Navy. Nice. Like family how old is that thing? Navy. There's a nice wool blanket. Like how old is that you think? Many, many, many 50 years. Fifty years. Yeah. Probably I like think that's something my dad would have, but probably back. A to wool like, blanket. Go look at how much a wool blanket is a good one like that is now. It's, yeah. it's stupid. That's going back to And that'll keep you warm and dry. Uh, oh. Gloves. Gloves. That's a that's a good one. Uh duct tape. Hey, you could be naked and afraid with duct tape and you'd be fine extra stuff for the goggles are good you never know when you're going to be well, in a we, sandstorm we were, yeah that's true we, we yeah. ride a lot of dusty areas another, another first aid kit that's cool um portable pit stop brief relief 
Holy smokes! I don't even want to see that. Put it away. I don't, the, I don't even know what nowhere. you would use that. What is that? Let me just go right over here. This is crazy. Uh, an extra koozie. Oh, we got some. Uh... Oh yeah. Are those, are those snowmobile pants? Well, or snowboarding, some... skiing, uh, snowmobiling. But the reason why they were in here is because we were doing those rides during the winter time, and yeah, if you need something over your legs. There's yeah, well, that, right that's why there. we carry uh, a lot of the fire starting stuff and survival blankets because we do. I didn't film this one snow camp trip we did up here, but it was insane. I wish we would have. Uh, we didn't have the uh, channel back then, so. But next park, year. Park gift pack. I don't know what the heck's in here. Oh, get it from the park. It's. It's a survival pack. <laughs> what could it be? I don't know if this would be edible at this oh point. Oh my god, there's some food in there. Okay, so. Out here, you can see all the heavy rain. We're starting to get some huge raindrops just pounding us right now. Let me close all this stuff up. And just in case. You can hear it. That too in the tarp. The tarp, the way we put it on here, it's nice. We got it angled down, so... Uh, and you're sleeping here. Hopefully, uh, we won't get any. Got no worries. Got no worries here. Uh, I'm gonna have to say, this is a, a, a great uh, way to make a survival shelter with a couple rigs. Uh, we got rain, it feels good, it's, it's cooled off a lot. Uh, we're gonna sit under the tarp a little bit, see what happens, and then we're going to try to make some kind of dinner. So, should be pretty exciting. We got a disco going on off the mountain. Fire this thing up. The wind has been blowing like crazy, but it has calmed down. Oh, Ooh. that could be too much. Beautiful. Look how cool this is. Look at how little it is. And that is it. Okay, so we're gonna let this thing boil, and then once it gets going and boiling. Then we'll pour it into the pouch of the noodles. We got the water boiling. Uh, this thing's pretty slick. Look at that. How small that is. Let's make sure we actually. Okay. I want to make sure it's a deep boil. Yep. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to put it in here. Take out the spoons. Let's stir it up a little bit. Oh, it smells fucking good. Fuck, it does smell good. <laughs> I'll turn this baby off. Crank that down. Mm. Alright, let's see what's it taste like. It smells good. Great. Is it good? It's good, huh? Oh my god. Okay, that's so awesome. We we did the uh, survival meal. Uh, it smells great. It uh, tastes great. I already had some. It's good. The winds calmed down. Mm -hmm. We're in our you know little survival shelter thing here. Well, we survived the night, and actually, you know, it wasn't that bad. The hammocks were nice. You know, I got the dogs blanket in there dog pillow and the rubber mat that the dog sits on in the back of the talon so it actually kept insulated didn't get that uh didn't get that cold last night but it rained on us uh kind of woke us up about four o'clock in the morning but uh i'm i'm pretty happy with this setup i mean this is something you could do you know almost something like a little camping adventure probably there's you can tweak these hammocks a little bit get a more, little more insulation on them but all in all 
So we're just going to enjoy a nice, uh, we got two packets of this instant coffee my wife had in her pack, which is cool. So I have never tried it, but it looks really good. I'm going to cup a couple of coffee and then uh, I'm going to bust out that other pack of dehydrated, I think it's like scrambled eggs and something else. So it should be pretty cool. I guess I wasn't filming any of that. So we're just having a cup of coffee. Uh, we slept pretty good last night. The rain woke us up about 4 o'clock in the morning. And it's just peaceful. Uh, no wind at all. And uh, it was a beautiful sunrise this morning. And last night was really cool. This whole thing was lit up. It's a good sign when you wake up, uh, have a nice cup of coffee. To a rainbow. Looks like it's raining down there. Just went right around us. So we dodged that one. That's cool. No wind up here. It's gorgeous. Alright, we're going to have this breakfast skillet. Okay. The breakfast one is not too bad. Not as good as the stroganoff last night, so but I'll tell you one thing. If you're hungry, this is really good. What do you think? It's actually pretty tasty, but like you said, if you were super hungry, this would be the best thing in the world. Yeah, and there's a lot. This would probably feed it probably three people, four people, mm -hmm. if you had to, so we'll give it a win. Well, we survived the night. Uh, the uh, test for survival mission was a success. Uh, showed you all the gear and stuff that you can carry. Uh, you know, use that as some takeaways for your, for your own rigs and stuff. And... Uh, See what you can keep in there all the time that it would help you if you did get stranded somewhere these the hammock camping i've never done that before it was amazing i had a pretty good night's sleep the weather was pretty mild it rained a little bit this morning but other than that it was great uh the freeze-dried meals were really good the, the breakfast one we just had was pretty good so if you add all that stuff up it just takes a very small amount of space to put you know to keep that in your rig so we appreciate you watching um Thanks for supporting the channel, and please subscribe if you haven't. Um, we've got a lot of new subscribers, and we're appreciative of that. Uh, we're going to try to keep pumping out these videos, you know, at least once a week. And then, Phil, are you there? One more time. How was it? <laughs> you know, not bad considering uh, what we had, working with what we what we had on the rigs, and luckily we carried some stuff with us, and it worked out very well. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a mission success. And uh, we'll see you guys all on the next one.